Meet the blind Zumba instructor leading a dance revolution. 33-year-old Neil Howard is defying the odds, proving that his passion, determination, and rhythm knows no boundaries. Despite his visual impairment, he's embraced the world of Zumba, but it hasn't been easy. In March of 2021, at nearly 500 pounds, Neil contracted a life-threatening staph infection in both legs. Surgery to remove the infection resulted in pneumonia in both lungs. At that moment, he realized that if he didn't change his lifestyle or lose weight, his life was on the line. Seven months later, his doctor recommended a medical procedure for weight management. Within three weeks, he was down 45 pounds. But he didn't stop there. Neil was committed to putting the work to lose the extra weight. He got himself back on track and back teaching Zumba, even sharing his moves on social media. Now as a certified Zumba instructor, Neil stands as a beacon of hope and inspiration for others facing challenges. Well, inspiration is right. It's hard not to be inspired by you, Neil. Welcome to Studio B yeah. in Houston Life. Thank you. So glad to be here. I am such big fans of you, too. Really? Yes. Well, after watching that, I think a lot of people are going to become fans of you. But that's kind of happened already. I mean, you have a ton of support on social media. People have been following your journey. But, but take us through that. I mean, you had to s dig deep to really make this big change in your life. Where did that come from? Yes, um, like, like you were saying, it came from me being in the hospital hospital, um, almost losing my life. And it was that moment when, because I was in the hospital and COVID was still around, so people couldn't come and visit. And so my parents, they were like, we're coming down to come see you. But the hospital was like, well, you can't come see me because mm. they thought I had COVID. Wow. And so it took me calling my mom that day and telling her, you know, the cardiologist was saying, you know, if this staph infection gets into your blood, then that's it mm. because it's going to eat away at your heart muscles. And when I told her that, you know, Hearing her cry on the phone, mm. it, 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 it tore me apart. Um, because, you know, we're, we're supposed to bury our parents. Our parents are not supposed to bury us. And just knowing that she couldn't be here, not knowing that she wanted to be here, and also knowing that even when I was 18 months old, I contracted bacterial meningitis. Mm. I almost died at 18 months. Wow. And just knowing that she couldn't come down and just hearing her cry on the phone, I was like, I got to make that change. And then looking at the board, in the hospital room, have them have me listed as the word morbidly obese. That word morbid within itself, it, it just didn't sit right with me. And so I just instantly knew like I had to do something because yeah. I just knew that it wasn't my time. Yeah. Well, you certainly made a change. And I got to tell you, Neil, you spread so much joy with your videos. It's so much fun to watch you do something you love. The video that we're seeing now, I mean, you've got great moves and you can really <laughs> hype up a crowd. Uh, you were born with something called retinitis pigmentosa. So you are slowly losing vision in both eyes over time. People may have heard of peephole vision. Uh, so this is a condition, there's no cure. And eventually you will be completely blind. How have you been able to adapt? Um, it has not been easy. I can definitely tell you that I have had some days where I, I, life just wasn't worth living. Um, and it, it did a lot to my mental health. Um, but thankfully, I had a great support system around me, um, friends that, you know, they don't judge me. They let me, they treat me as if I'm just a regular person. Um, of course, they are aware of my condition. And some days they know they have to offer me a little more assistance than some days. But most days they, you know, if I run into a trash can or something, they're like, well, you didn't see that? And I'm just like, wow. <laughs> just like, yeah, but, um, but it, like I said, it has been um, going from being able to drive to having to stop driving all of a sudden, that has been the biggest um, thing of all. Cause you know, I used to be able to just grab my car keys and go out the door and now it's like, oh, your Uber's gonna be here in like five minutes. And I'm like, oh, I'm just ready to go. And, <laughs> and so, but other than that, I mean, but thankfully for that, um, I'm, I'm able to, you know, you know, still travel the city um, through with Uber, Lyft, Metro Lyft. I'm still able to, you know, go places. Um, Get where you need to go. Exactly. And go uh, inspire the masses with your fitness. Exactly. Which I do want to say, it is, we use the word inspiring so much w when talking about you because you are, you know, it is probably frustrating waiting on a driver because you are so ready to go. It's really this infectious spirit that it really translates through the dancing and uh, the movements. Um, what, are, what is some feedback that you get? What do people tell you that really makes you feel good? Like, they see me. 
Uh, so the thing that the running joke that that um, that me and my brother have um, is so whenever I'm teaching a class, I don't teach with the stick, and so I'll pull the stick out of the, in the class, and they're like, "Oh my gosh, you're blind!" And I'm like, "Yeah." And they're like, "Well, you don't dance like you're blind," and I'm like. <laughs> How do, How do the blind people, people dance? dance? <laughs> exactly. <That's a> <laughs> and it's it's just it's just those moments because it's it's just those moments because like they're like oh my gosh like I didn't even know it but some days I have to pull out the stick to let them know like hey I need my space because um, uh, I don't want to run into you. <laughs> I know. I, I want a stick for cook off. Like th give me my you know my uh, surrounding area here. This has got to be for you. I mean again th the struggles that come along with slowly losing your vision. I can't even. imagine imagine what that's like. But it seems like every day, Neil, when you are encountering folks who say, oh my gosh, I you don't dance like a blind person. I mean, they're teachable moments for all of us, right? And as someone who, who is blind, what is your message to people out there, whether they're going through a similar thing or maybe they move through the world and they're afraid of someone carrying a, a cane or a stick? Um, what I can say um, is don't treat us like we're different. We are here. Um, we see you, um, quote unquote, <laughs> we see you, uh, whether we do or not, but we, we know you're there. Just don't treat us as if we're less than, than what normal society indicates what a normal person is supposed to look like. Because at the end of the day, we are the ones that are really just out here defying the odds. Um, because I, there, there are many things I know I still want to do that I've been told that I can't do. Um, cause for the longest I wanted, growing up, I wanted to be a pediatric surgeon, but of course, you know, I was told you, well, you can never be a pediatric surgeon or you can never fly a plane because of your eyesight. And I was like, well, I don't really like flying like that. So, <laughs> so we're on that. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> right? And I was like, uh, I, I would like to be a pediatrician, but you know, I'd rather go big or go home. Um, I'd rather be a surgeon, but, um, just like I say, um, we are here. We, um, we're not going anywhere. Um, this is our world just as much as anybody else's. Amen. Um, and so I think that's the biggest thing. But I will say the biggest thing about not just being a blind person is also being, you know, a, a gay blind person. And that's that's the biggest thing about it because it's there's again there's that um, that double stigma of okay, well, okay, he's blind, but he's also gay. But I also have to keep in mind, in my mind, like I have to keep my guard up on certain things. Yeah. Um, especially in dating in that world. Um, but overall, I would say the best feedback that I get from my students is just whenever I come to class and I'm setting up and they come in, they're all just coming in, they're hugging each other. They're like, oh my gosh, we're so glad to see you. You know, if they haven't seen us, if they haven't seen their friend and like, one or two classes, they're on the phone calling them, seeing where they're at, just making sure they're awesome. checking on um, each other. That's and a community that you built. Exactly. You built. And, and and like I was, I had seen um, um, on the news earlier this week, it was saying that, you know, these types of interactions, it's what's keeping women to um, live longer because of the oxytocin that's being um, built in the brain. And what we also, what I've also found out from research is the when dopamine, serotonin, and oxytocin all mix together in the brain at one time, it's just as powerful as getting a dose of morphine. That's incredible. I need Socializing a dose of that. is so yeah. important. <laughs> Neil Howard, what do you say? We take a break, and after the break, we're going to do some Zumba. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Okay, we're back with Neil Howard, Body by Neil. Let's go for it. Take right. it away, Neil. We're just going to step up, switch legs. Okay. Step up. Look at us. Feeling good. Up. St. Texas. Oh, yeah. I got my Texas. boots on. Zumba, <laughs> we're hanging with Neil Howard. By the way, uh, you teach at the Fitness Connection up near Greenpoint? Yes, I teach there Monday through Friday. All where right. else are you teaching? Um, right now, nowhere else. I would love to teach at TSU. Yeah, I would <laughs> TSU? Okay, yeah, I like uh, that. So cool. Hey, Neil, 6'5". He's a tall Zumba instructor. He's got the best smile move. Here we go. Neil Howard, thank you so much. Y'all have a great weekend. Go Texan Day. Go Texan Day.